Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and I'm quite excited today. Today, we're going to get very close to solving a challenge that I've had for about a year. I've been looking for the easiest way for people to get started with 3D printing. And one of the problems many people have with 3D printing is not the printers. It's loading software onto a computer and configuring that software and utilizing that software. So today we're going to look at AstroPrint 3.0 that I believe comes very close to solving this problem. Now, for those of you that have watched the channel before, you know I've looked at AstroPrint in the past and I've said, I really want to like it, but it's not quite there. Well, I think it's there now. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. AstroPrint 3.0 adds two new capabilities that I believe bring it very close to being an ideal way to get started with 3D printing. The first is they've added a current version of Cura, Cura version 3.6 to the cloud environment because AstroPrint runs as a website. It runs in the cloud. You can use it from any Mac, any PC. You can use it from a Chromebook. That's very, very important for schools or if you want to get started with 3D printing very inexpensively. Maybe you spend $230, $240 for an Ender 3 Pro and then you need a computer to run the software. Well, computers are expensive. A Windows computer might be three, four, five, six hundred dollars for a decent computer. This Mac is three thousand dollars. Now, this is a souped up Mac for video editing, but it's expensive. A Chromebook, you can purchase a really good Chromebook for three hundred fifty dollars. And so, with a three hundred dollar Chromebook, $230 printer, maybe even a less expensive one, maybe the Mono Price Select Mini for $199. You can show up at your grandchildren's home ready to get them started on a new 3D printing experience. And there's no better way to make memories than to make things together with children. So going back to Astroprint, the first thing they did was they added a current slicer. Now, Cura, the desktop version is at 4.2, but the majority of the changes between 3.6 and 4.2 are about usability, user interface. They've done a really nice job with the latest version of Cura, but the core engine that all modern versions of Cura are built on is based on the 3.6 engine. That's what's embedded in Astroprint, and they've put their own user experience on top. The second thing they did was there was no way to manipulate models that were designed outside of AstroPrint in AstroPrint. So let's say you had a model, this is a pop can opener. Maybe you wanted to make it bigger because it's just a little bit too small for your mom to use whose fingers are a bit arthritic. So now in AstroPrint, you can rescale it, you can rotate it, you can stretch it, you can cut it into pieces so you can print a printer bigger object in parts on your 3D printer. So we're gonna take a look at that also. So I think AstroPrint really is very close, but AstroPrint is interesting because it's really an ecosystem. Let's look at that ecosystem now. I'm calling this a 3D printer workflow management system. Why? Because it's all of the pieces you need to first find a model or create a model. Then prepare the model to print it on a 3D printer. That's called slicing. You go from a three-dimensional model to a series of layers. Once you've sliced the model, you've gone from an STL file to a G code file. You need to load that G code file onto your printer. Well, if you look on the sort of the right-hand side, you'll see it says free $99, $199. Those are four different ways you can load a file from AstroPrint onto your printer. 
The simplest one is you download it to your computer, you put it on an SD card, you place the SD card into your printer. Easy. That's the traditional way to load files onto a printer. But there are three other ways you can load files onto your printer over Wi-Fi. What they all require is some type of an appliance. This appliance here is a generic Raspberry Pi loaded with free AstroPrint software. A Raspberry Pi is a small single board computer. That computer with the case is about the size of a pack of cigarettes. That particular component sold for about $60. It includes the actual computer, which is a single board, the case, and a power supply. Now, if you don't want to put the pieces together yourself, you can buy a gateway kit from AstroPrint. Those sell for $99 and are basically the same thing, a little slimmer and trimmer than that example that I have. Likewise, if you want something fully assembled that's really quite nice, you can buy a replace placement console and that's an AstroPrint Touch controller that has a full color LCD that you can use to load models, manipulate models for your printer. In all cases, if you have an appliance, you can send your model directly from AstroPrint to the printer over Wi-Fi. Now let's take a look at the actual AstroPrint user interface. On the top, the first item we'll see is the design library. If we click on that, you'll see the models that I've loaded into AstroPrint. These can be models I created in Tinkercad or other CAD programs. They can be models that I loaded directly from Thingiverse um, or from other libraries of models. If we go back by clicking on the home icon here, we can see the next item is labeled print queues. Now I'm using the paid version of AstroPrint, which is about $10 a month, the free version, which can do everything I'm going to demonstrate today, only supports two printers, has less storage space, and does not support queues. Queues are the ability to line up a bunch of things you want to print. When you start printing one, it'll print on your printer and you'll be notified when it completes. You have to remove that printer, print from the printer, and then you just click continue to go to the next print. So if you're in a production environment, maybe with many printers, Qs is very useful. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that today. The next capability is only available if you have an appliance, and that's the ability to monitor your printer. I'll show you that a little bit later. Print captures is if you capture a movie of your print being made, which you can do with a AstroPrint appliance, then they're stored here. Print history shows you all of the items you've printed, when you printed them, how long they were printing for, whether you printed them to completion or you canceled them, but this is only for items you print through an appliance. If you download to an SD card, AstroPrint cannot track your prints for you. Build plate is where you take an existing model, an STL file, and you manipulate that. And I will demonstrate that a little later. Then in this next row, we have third-party applications, Thingiverse, a repository of models, My Mini Factory, another repository of models. 3D Print Cloud is a utility, is a system, a service that will fix 3D print models that aren't correct, that have errors in them. Leo Poly is a modeling tool where it looks like you have a block of clay and you manipulate it by stretching it, by pushing it, by pulling it. 3D Slash is a modeling tool where you build things by stacking blocks and knocking out blocks. I'm really not a fan of either of those. I prefer using Tinkercad or that it is fully integrated with AstroPrint. On the bottom, you define the printers you go, you're going to use the materials, the filament, and you can save slicer setups or conversion setups for converting between a model and a ready to print file that you're going to use over and over again. And in the store, 
you'll see here that you can purchase some of the various components for a Astroprint appliance in this store. Okay, let's start with finding a model on Thingiverse, loading it into Astroprint, and showing you how you would slice it and manipulate it to go ahead and print it. So I'm gonna to go to Thingiverse. Thingiverse is never very fast, whether you use it through Astroprint or directly. And then I could search for a model or I could scroll through and find a model. Let's actually search for earrings. I'll print some earrings for my grandchildren. And uh, these look actually quite nice. So I'll click on that item. And then if I like it, I can take and I can add these earrings uh, to my build plate. I do that by clicking on the plus file. And this is going to automatically add this STL file, this model to AstroPrint where I can convert it, slice it into a G code file. Okay, I'm all done here. I'll click back on my AstroPrint menu. I'll go to my design library and I'll see here that the leaf is now, which is an earring, is now listed in my design library. Now, I can either immediately print it, in which case it will use my default settings, but this is only gonna work if I have an AstroPrint appliance. Instead, in our case, we're going to slice it first, separately, and we can rotate this around using the 3D viewer to see it better. You can see the hole at the top for the post. That looks great. If we wanted to make this larger or smaller, we would click on this build plate button here. And then we can take and we could scale this. We can make it larger or smaller. We could also cut it into pieces on various positions or various axes. We could move where it's located on the build plate. Maybe we were going to duplicate it and put multiple things here. Now in this particular case, we're not going to manipulate it, so I'm just going to leave this part of the application. I'm gonna go back to my design library, back to my leaf, go to slice, and this is where you set your slicer parameters. These are the rules that are used for converting this to a set of layers. Draft will be fastest, best quality will be the finest quality print, but it will be much slower. Fill density will determine for a solid object how solid it is, and most solid objects, 20% is more than enough. And if you are an advanced user in an easy to use interface, you have access to all of the standard Cura capabilities. I'm going to go ahead and slice this model. And now if I click over here to my sliced model, I can go down here and download it. That's going to download it into my download folder that's been assigned to Chrome. I can show it in the browser, in the finder on my Mac. Uh, you could show this in the file explorer on your PC and I'm gonna drag it to my SD card. Then I will eject my SD card and I'm ready to print this file. It's that easy. I take the SD card, I plug it into the printer. Now that I've turned the printer on, I'm going to show you how you would do this if you have an appliance. If you have an AstroPrint appliance, and you can hear my printer is on now, why the, that's why there's a little bit of noise in the background, you can click on this Print Now button. And then you'll see the printer you're going to print to. I'm going to select that printer. I'm gonna say Print. And this will automatically send this file to my AstroPrint gateway that will load it onto my Ender 3 and I can click on monitor and watch what's happening. So you can see that it's currently heating up my model. And if I switch this to video mode and start the video, 
we'll be able to watch it actually print once it starts printing. So the AstroPrint environment is a wonderful environment, let's say in a school setting. You have the teacher sitting at the front desk, uh, students bring models up to them, or better yet, they load, produce them in Tinkercad. The teacher sends them to AstroPrint and then starts them on the printers that are sitting in the back of the room. So overall, I am really delighted with the progress that AstroPrint has made. I found it very, very easy to use. I love the idea that I can use a modern quality slicer, a slicer that I know will work because it's worked on hundreds of hundreds of thousands of printers, and I can use it from the cloud. I think it's a big plus that I can use this environment from a Chromebook, either by using an SD card or a AstroPrint appliance. I'm going to do a second video in more detail on the AstroPrint appliances, the Gateway, the homemade version, the Touch version, and the OctoPrint plugin if you're already an OctoPrint user. Well, folks, I hope this introduction to AstroPrint 3.0 was valuable to you, that you learned something. Um, download it, it's completely free. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Share this video with everyone you think will benefit from this video. And most importantly, leave me comments so we can continue to learn together.